The toilet cassette runs off a separate tank to your actual water tanks. It's a 10 litre fill, remove the cap. Don't forget to add on the extension situated on the cassette. Place this in, you're supplied with one chemical for the filler, one for your cassette. Fill in your water, it runs off its gauge here to notify you when it's full. You will not get signalled that you've run out of flush water, but you will be signalled on the toilet inside that it's time to empty the cassette. When you do, make sure you come out, sliding it out, the cassette will remove itself easily. If you feel any resistance, do not pull against it. The chute on the toilet may have been left open inside. Once you've sorted out that, bringing it out, wheeling away to where you need to go, taking the cap off, removing the cap, pushing the button and releasing into your area. Once you're done, cap back on, extension back on top, and slotting away. The Truma 14 litre ultra rapid system, when running on gas, step one, turning on your gas bottle. Step two, remove the cowl cover. Step three, turning on the water heater. Step four, selecting your desired 60 or 70 degrees on the three-way toggle. The hot water system may not light on the first attempt due to gas not reaching the hot water system in time. If this occurs, you will get a little red light fault down the bottom. What you'll need to do is turn it back to the middle, then select the desired temperature again. You may also happen to have a fault the second time. If this occurs, repeat. If this occurs a third time, you may have to look to troubleshoot. For example, you may have left the cover on. If you have left the cover on, you will need to wait at least five to 10 minutes so that any gas built up in that area will vent out. Once you have waited the five to 10 minutes, you can come back inside, select your desired temperature and check that you do not get a red light fault. You may also be able to check by going outside and feeling the temperature coming off the cowl. If you decide that you're going to run the Truma Ultra Rapid on 240 volt power, you can forget about doing steps one, two, three, and four. All you will need to do is plug the van into mains power and underneath the bed where the hot water system is situated, just turn on the, the power in the power point. The Truma Ultra Rapid does not have an anode, so when stored, the tank will have to be drained. All you need to do to do this is simply lift the little yellow toggle and the 14 litre unit will drain out onto the floor. Make sure if you're not in a grassed area, you have a bucket underneath. The van is fitted with a 2000 watt inverter. This inverter has two outlets. When you want to use this off grid, you'll simply need to switch on, either plug in into the available outlet, or we've already run as a standard, a plugged in appliance that then leads out to a power point beside the bed. This power point is black and labeled 2000 watt inverter only. Make sure your appliance is not over the 2000 watt or does not have more than the 4000 watt startup. When finished with the inverter, make sure you do switch it off. If you leave this appliance turned on, you may have flat batteries by the morning. The van is fitted with two Enerdrive chargers one 40 amp DC to DC charger and one 40 amp AC charger. The DC to DC charger is working while you're off grid, either taking benefit from the 300 watt solar on the roof or through your Anderson plug when plugged into the car. There is also an external Anderson plug on the rear of the van for portable solar panels. Do make sure those panels have no regulator on them as the DC to DC will regulate them. The AC charger will be in action when the 240 volt is plugged into the mains power. We have plugged into the power point over here. Make sure that is turned on for your charger to be working. The chargers both have been set up to what type of batteries you have in the van. You will not need to touch anything, but you can monitor them by their digital screens. While the control panel may look complex, it is quite simple and with everything up here all at your fingertips. Starting from left to right, our amp meter is letting us know what we are drawing at this moment. Our voltmeter is letting us know what the batteries are sitting at, 12.9 being full. 
We then have our grey water gauge and our two water tanks. Moving along, we have our water heater switch, which is for the gas hot water system. Pump one and pump two. Each tank has its own pump. Each pump will pump to all the lines. So what you'll need to do is, using your water in one tank, running through one pump, when that tank runs empty or you've finished using that tank before you take off to your next trip, turning off and switching to the next pump. That pump will then pump to all the lines. There is no need to use both the pumps at the same time. If you do this, you'll be drawing double the amps. Shower power is running shower power into the shower, the light and the exhaust fan. The fan is a little fan off the batteries. The outside lights is the outside lights in the annex area. The shower light is to the external kick-ass mounted shower tent. The roof lights are the roof lights. Once these are turned off, all the lights will turn off. Once this is turned back on, you will have to individually turn them all back on. In the middle are all our resettable isolated switches. So if we have any issues, for instance, with one of the pumps playing up, it will pop out. You'll need to reset that. Then we then move on, we have our circuit breakers, our main 12 volt circuit breaker. When storing the van, if you wish to not use any 12 volt, you don't need the fridge running for instance or anything else, you can turn it straight off here as well as the same with the main isolation switch. You have two 12 volt sockets and then a 60 amp Anderson breaker. Do not turn this off if you're not going to remember to turn it back on when driving or you'll be getting no feed from your car down to the DC to DC charger. Two speakers, 240 volt outlet, mains power RCD, so if you do overload the system, just like at home, it will trip here and need to be reset. And your aircon is hardwired in and same thing, if that re trips, it will need to be reset here. When using the sink, you will need to attach and remove the water pipe each time. Making sure each time you do attach, you start on the kitchen sink. If you start the van side, you will have water flow out if the pumps are on. Remembering that this hot water can be 70 degrees. Luckily, I don't have the pumps on, but if they were, we would be having 70 degree water coming, spitting out. Once these are attached, you can use the water. Once you're finished with the water, to clear, this is the only section not hooked up to the grey water. You'll need to slide out the prep bench and drop down the Constantine pipe hose into a bucket. Once you're finished, simply squash the hose back up, out of the way, keeping out of the way, sliding in your prep bench. When you're finished, remove the hose from the van side. Lock in your drawers, sink tap down and sliding away. Moving on to the four burner gas cooker. It is inline plumb, so we'll need to just drop the gas hose out of the bottom, taking off the dust cap cover and sliding into the bayonet fitting. Once that is done, the four burner stove is started by a D battery, which is located under the four burner. Push down, turn, and light. Once you've finished with the cooker, make sure lifting these up, putting away the wind guards, detaching from the bayonet. There is a clip underneath to lock that in so it doesn't drop out while you're traveling. Dust cover on. And sliding away the four burner. When you are finished with everything here, make sure all the handles are down before you slide down the top. 